Once again, we have another solid chapter. Today has been a very good day for Weekly Shonen Jump. And for anyone that reads a lot of manga, I mean, One Piece had a solid chapter, Boku no Hero had a solid chapter, and now this chapter of The Promised Neverland was solid as well. Such a great Christmas present, and like I've already said in my previous two videos, I'm glad to see these chapters out. I didn't think we'd have chapters this week, I expect them like sometime next week, so I am glad to have, you know, The Promised Neverland here and the other two chapters as well, for instance, One Piece and Boku no Hero. But anyways, getting right into it though, this chapter, very simple, straight to the point, however, it's a very crucial and important chapter, easily in the top 10 most important chapters so far of the series. And the reason why I say that is because what this means towards Emma's character. Emma, as I've stated many times, she is the embodiment of a typical shonen character, a typical shonen lead. For instance, someone that is usually the main character of a shonen that's very naive and wants to protect and save everybody. It's just something you see constantly in a shonen. And Emma fits that mold of that type of character. She is someone that wants to save all the children. She is someone that doesn't want anyone to die and doesn't want to sacrifice anyone at all. She is that typical character. However, there is often times we have seen Emma showcase this different side to her to where she acts like she's almost psychotic and she's crazy. And I do like how the writer goes out of their way to do that. It does show that there is something off with Emma. And one of these days, I do believe that will eventually be dived into and tackled, but for now though, what this chapter actually shows is that Emma is starting to learn the harshness of reality and how the world really works. Let's think about what this entire arc has kind of been about. The man with no name. As we know, he is in his position, the reason why he acts like he does is because he lost everything. His entire family, he lost everything, and he used to, at one point or time, be exactly like Emma. He was very naive, he was someone that wanted to save everybody, he was someone that didn't want to sacrifice anything. He was a very naive individual, very similar to Emma. And that is why he didn't like her. He didn't like her because every time he looked at her, he remembered him his old self, how he used to be, and it made him very sick. And he wanted Emma or Ray to wake up and realize how the world really is, how messed up this world is right now that they're in. It is not a bunch of sunshine and rainbows. It's a lot of darkness and sadness and all that throughout this world. And he wanted to at least make one of them realize what's really going on here. And it does seem that this chapter was actually trying to show that Emma is getting a wake-up call. Now, what this wake-up uh, wake call is, is basically letting her know is that she cannot save everyone. It's not a possibility. There is going to be people that are going to die. There's going to be people she cannot save. And that is exactly what just happened here. She had a wake-up call and realized she is very naive. She cannot save everyone. She is no longer, you know, going up against unintelligent demons that she's been running away from her fighting in the woods. She is once again encountering intelligent demons. Demons that are capable of fought. Demons that are like the nobles of this world. Demons that are high up there that are able to figure out things that not even normal human beings could be capable of or even children. And so she is now encountering her how naive she was, what, how wrong she was, what she was doing wrong in the first place, and she realizes now that she cannot just think that she is going to be able to save everybody. And that is why she was so upset, crying, and angry at the end of the chapter. Because she didn't save a life at all in this chapter, or last chapter. Even though that's what it looked like, it looked like she was able to save Theo, that wasn't the case. The only reason why Theo is alive right now was just to deliver a message. And Emma knew that. She automatically realized that the other two that died, they died to set an example and a message, but also the reason why Theo was left alive was just to tell what happened to Emma. And so Emma now knows that she didn't save anyone. She effectively got them killed. That's how she could actually view that. She realized because of how she was thinking, she got them killed. She never would have believed there would have been someone like Lewis amongst them that would be very similar to, you know, another demon that we met very recently. For instance, Musica and all of them, and how, you know, they actually take joy in the hunt. And so she didn't think about that possibility, and now she's realizing how naive she was. So, a very solid chapter overall. I like how it's been building up since the beginning of this art for, you know, Emma to have that wake-up call. 
that's what's happening right here. She's getting that wake-up call. Now, um, besides that, there's not really much else to really talk about, honestly. I mean, there's a couple of scenes in terms of the artistic style of this chapter to the dynamic of, like, to how the tone shifted to, you know, one scene showcasing that they only take four people every time they come back. For instance, only four people die every time the demons come. So, there, there's never, like, three, there's never two, there's never five or six. It's always just four people that end up dead. So, that is a number. So, once four people die then they leave. So it's always the same amount, which now we know the number and how many that they need to watch out for. For instance, if four die, that's it. So now Emma knows the number and they know that they come back every couple of days and then they restock the children every single month. And there we go. So a lot of details were given to us and Emma now has to realize that she needs to go in for the hunt and, you know, go after them. I really am liking this character. I'm really liking Lewis's character. He reminds me a lot of Hisoka. I, I, I don't know how many else is getting that exact vibe like I am, but he reminds me a lot of Hisoka because Hisoka was that type of character in Hunter x Hunter that left Gone and Killua alive because he, you know, wanted them to grow stronger. He wanted them to be a threat in the future for when he finally fights them and wants to take them down. He has a real challenge, a real strong fight and that's why he let them be and so that's exactly what this reminds me of Lewis is building up Emma he's trying to make her into a hunter trying to make her into a monster for he also has to worry and it's not just a one-sided fight so he reminds me a lot of Hisoka he he's that type of character and so judging by the dynamic of his character and all that I highly doubt Lewis is going to just be done after this arc for instance the way his character is going depending on how the writer wants to take him he could potentially be a, a really long reoccurring villain villain, like a villain that pops back every so often. I can also see him becoming necessarily like a character that helps out Emma and the children, not because he wants to be their friends, but because of future goals. Now, let me explain. Since, like I said, he is a Hisoka type character, there is a very likely possibility that Emma might be able to talk to this man and say, if you let us go, if you let the children escape, we will form our own tribes, our own band, break, you know, past the wall or whatever, and break the promise, which in turn would bring back humanity into this area, and so the hunts could begin once again between both races. And I could definitely see Emma saying something like that to Lewis to get his attention, because that's what he wants. He wants to be able to hunt again, he wants to be able to have that sport, that spirit again of hunting and also being hunted, and if Emma gives him a promise like that, he actually might help them out, help them escape just for that could happen. I could definitely see that going down if that's what, where he wants to take it. I could definitely see the writer doing that with his character. It would definitely fit in line from what we've seen thus far from him. So, uh, I think that's about it. The chapter overall, good chapter, very simple, but it was a really good way to kind of showcase that Emma is starting to change. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. How'd you feel about this week's chapter? And just a brief FYI, next week there's probably not going to be any Promise Neverland chapter or One Piece or Boku no Hero. So if you don't see it on a Thursday or Friday, that does mean that we're not getting a chapter next week because of the holidays. So anyways, with that being said, happy holidays everybody. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. Please be safe and chibi out.